Hello, I'm Pete, and welcome to what's left of Ivy Cottage. So here we are back in Ivy Cottage, and uh, we've made some progress since the last time you were here. Due to lockdowns and things like that, we didn't have uh, the ability to get new SD cards, and we couldn't get the the uh, recordings off the cards that we had um, because uh, Demolition Dave couldn't get down to download it and all that sort of thing for our editing. So there's a, a little gap where uh, the roof magically came off the house. So there you go. So we're going to have to do a, a little walk around and a catch up to, to show you how we've got on. So uh, that's what we're going to do now. I'll bring you around and I'll, I'll show you what we've been doing. So it's a cold November's morning here at Ivy Cottage and today's job is to start taking down the chimney breast here behind me and uh, Wolfie's on site to make sure everything goes uh, smoothly. So I've set up a bay of scaffolding behind me here uh, going up the height of the chimney and I've also uh, constructed a slide out of timber so I'm going to be able to slide the rubble down from the first floor window here straight into the skip. It'll just make things a little faster for me as I said I'm working on my own here at the moment so that uh, every little bit of Something that I can do to make things go faster uh, makes things easier for me and helps get the project moving. And that's the idea. I want to get the demolition work done by Christmas if I can at all because uh, you know time really is moving on now and I want to get back into the into the construction stage of things, the demolition stage. <laughs> I want it to be over at this stage, so uh, I got, but I gotta keep going, I gotta get it done. So that's it. I'm gonna start getting it done. We'll see how we go. So as you can see behind me, I start to take off the uh, chimney cap there and the pieces are big and heavy and one piece dropped and is actually uh, broken through some of the flooring here so it goes to show how careful I'm going to have to be in order to keep things uh, working safely here and uh, the last thing I want is me, the scaffolding and the chimney coming crashing through a floor so I think bit by bit and piece by piece is probably the, the way to do this. So here we are upstairs in Ivy Cottage and uh, behind me the scaffolding is now gone I haven't had the camera out because it's been raining all, all the time and uh, obviously the camera isn't waterproof so you haven't got to see what, uh, how, or what or how, or how you take it down and uh, what you do is you just grab a hammer and I'll just take one there just get a, a hammer like this and just uh, slowly work away and just hit the side of the stone and it loosens and you take it out bit by bit and bring it down bit by bit the, um, some of the pieces of stone that were up there were so heavy that um, if they did fall they would, they would go through the floor and with the scaffolding, the weight of the scaffolding on top of this floor, the stone, the rubble, everything that was falling down, I was just being a little bit uh, cautious um, in case the, the floor would collapse on me uh, with the scaffolding along with it and all the stone. I, I don't think I'd survive if that happened so I was being extra careful. So now that I've got to this level it's a little bit easier, you're not up in the scaffolding and you can work uh, with a sledgehammer now and take it down um, a, bit, uh, a little bit faster, even though it's just tap tap tap, just work away, no, uh, no major strenuous work doing it, it just takes time and uh, shoveling up the uh, rubble which I'm using to the slide to slide down into the skip so everything's going very nicely, I have a nice big pile of stone just down by the back of the skip as well and uh, I'll hopefully use that for something in the future, some of it is a bit burnt on one edge but yet again I can break that maybe and, and use it for building something uh, in the garden maybe later on, a little, a little bench or a uh, a little picnic table or something like that. Anyway, that, that's that's for that's for later. That's for down the road. So this is how far I've got, and uh, I'll just show you a little bit of uh, of how it's done. And it really is quite simple. And it just loosens out the stone. And as I said, I have a pile for the stone and a pile for this uh, rubble. And I just pull that small stuff off to the side, and obviously the big stone can go off for the pile over there. So, and it is just there's not a, a whole pile of effort needed. It does just break quite easily. Just a bit time consuming. That's all. So there we go. And you end up with some lovely pieces of stone, which we can definitely use later on.
Well, I'm back again, uh, help here in the upstairs of Ivy Cottage, and it's another day, another another dollar. The um, the weather's been terrible at the moment, and the rain keeps coming down, it makes working a little difficult. But I am making progress, and as you can see behind me, we're missing the chimney brass. So I've managed to take that down, all the way down uh, past where the roof was, and down to the first floor. And I started to work down into the um, into the ground floor. But it is, it's a lot of stone and a lot of work, and uh, it's just a, a case of bit by bit, and I'll get there. So uh, yeah, the chimney breast used to be here behind me. I used to join into the wall just over here, and that's all gone now. And I've got about three foot down underneath the floor here on one side, but it's also the chimney breast is supporting part of the floor, so I just have to be careful as I remove the rest of it. So now today's job is to take down uh, this chimney breast downstairs. I don't know how much I'm going to get done because it is quite big and I think sometimes uh, setting yourself an impossible goal is counterproductive. It only makes you feel like you're not achieving what you're supposed to be achieving. So my goal today is just do some work, see what happens and see how far I can take this down. Some of the uh, timbers in the roof are supported on this chimney breast here so I have to bear that in mind when I start uh, bringing down this wall because I don't want something falling on my head, so I just need to keep an eye on it. And I can see that at least two of them are supported on the chimney breast there and between the chimney breast. So I've got some macro props just to prop up the end of them for when that's time. So for the moment, I'm just going to get started and uh, start working away, dig away, fill up that skip and uh, see where we get. So I've just spent the last half hour digging out all the um, soot and sand and rubble and all the bits of stone that have dropped down here. It's just going to help me get in closer into the edge of the um, chimney breast to help take it down. There's no point in piling more stone and more rubble on top of what's already there. You'll just end up with an unworkable workable mess. So this is how far I've got. So now it's time to get up on top there and start uh, breaking out the rock and uh, take down this chimney breast. There was a couple of videos ago where he was telling you about the fireplaces and in these houses they tend to close them in and close them in and that often there's a number of fireplaces within a fireplace and we had the, the first one here, we had the second one here and now we can see actually where the, the third fireplace used to be which is the original and it's got a, a little arch made of steel and red bricks um, sat up on top of it to make the arch of the fireplace. So that's the original one. Unfortunately this isn't part of my plan to keep this uh, Jimmy Breast so it's, uh, it's coming out, but it's, uh, it's lovely to see and maybe something that I could, um, I could feed into later on when I'm, uh, when I'm doing a bit of a feature here. Perhaps maybe I could do something sympathetically like this just to bring a bit of character back into the house. I know I'm taking all of the character out of the house. I can't even say most of the character. It is all of the character and the reason for it is, is I have to get this house to be energy efficient. It has to make sense for the future and most of the structure, in fact all of the structure as it is, is not energy efficient so you know things like this have to go uh, and also to make space, to make the, safe, the stairs safe to travel on. There's so many reasons for taking out this chimney breast uh, that it just, it just can't make sense to keep it. So unfortunately the original feature is going but it's interesting to see the old one and perhaps we can put a bit of it back. Well, I'm never one to um, be worried about making a fool of myself or contradicting myself because I do it quite often so there's no shame when you get used to it after a while. Um, it turns out that probably wasn't the original fireplace because right behind here this, this whole wall is, is falling forward and behind it is a plastered wall. So that's more than likely the original wall and it would make sense then as to why the sitting room was so small. It's because they built a fireplace in front of a fireplace, they built a fireplace within that fireplace and another one inside that. So it turns out that's not the original fireplace, even though that is very much in keeping with what I know to be the original fireplaces in these cottages. Uh, so to be totally honest at this stage, I don't know what the original fireplace did look like, but it was, it was somewhere back here, not in front of that wall there. 
So there you go. What can you do? So I'm still working away inside here, taking down the chimney breast, and I'm just pulling out the rubble bit by bit. Any stone that's there, I'm saving for something later on, and uh, any of the big pieces of block or rubble are going in the skip, and then I'll have to shovel up all the, the dust and uh, sand and whatever else is left afterwards, and uh, put that in the skip also. But as I said, uh, this sitting room just seemed a bit small to me when I was um, when I was looking at when I first looked at this house. It just seemed a bit too small. It was the smallest room in the house. And it didn't quite make sense because this originally would have been the kitchen, so it was quite an important room in the house. Obviously this is where everybody ate and where the cooking was done and all that. So it did need to have as much space as any other room in the house. So I always thought it was odd. But what I found is just behind here, obviously we, we had the fake uh, fireplace wall that was in front of the old fireplace. And what I found here is this is um, just concrete brick, or block should I say, concrete block. Just built up here again in front of the original wall. So what I thought was, was this whole, um, this whole porch area that, uh, that um, the, front, the front corridor or hallway as it is in front of the front door is probably a recent addition and probably wasn't part of the original structure. I would say the front door probably opened directly into the, um, into the kitchen and there wasn't a, a, por um, a hallway here at all. So that would make a lot of sense as to why this room is so small now is because it's been closed in bit by bit first with this little hallway and putting in that door bringing out the fireplace and getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's, um, it's maybe a bit of inspiration. Maybe I don't want to uh, put back the uh, front hallway here. Maybe I just want to leave it open and have the front door opening straight onto the sitting room. If somebody's asked there, would I do a revised uh, plan um, of what I'm going to do here as far as the drawing goes? And I will get to that. I, I think it's a good idea, especially for myself even, just to keep, uh, to keep track of it. I think if you do, if you do have a plan, it's bad to change it if you're not, if you're not keeping up with the changes. So perhaps a, a plan is a good idea. And not o thanks not only for that uh, question, but that question has become a suggestion and that suggestion is a good idea. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that on board and thank you for that. So yeah, so I'm going uh, to keep breaking this down. We'll have a look as we go. It's a sort of hard to see on the camera because I can't get the camera back far enough to get the, the whole room in because obviously it's quite small and quite tight. But um, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep going. I'll try, and, I'll try and show you as best I can what, what I have done. And obviously we keep stripping this back and keep taking it down and the space will, will become apparent as we do that. There is one original little feature here that I have found. And that's behind the built-in fireplace that we, we thought was the original fireplace, which isn't. Behind, there's another wall again, which I think is the original wall. And right here on the corner is a little metal bracket. And I will bring the camera a bit closer in a second so you can have a good look. But it's got a little hole in there and a metal bracket running through the wall. And that was probably the original crane. There used to be a crane across the, the fire for putting the pot over the fire originally. This is a, a long time ago before cookers were around, so that was how they did it. So I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe that's the original bracket for the crane that would have hung over the original fire. This is the original wall of the house, and you can, you can see the old plaster there and all that crumbling away. And uh, this is a built-on wall in front of it. So look, that's how far we've got. We're going to keep going. It's now four o'clock in the evening and this is how far we've got. I've uh, dug out the floor as, as far as I can with all the rubble that's come down here and uh, it was a bit of a, a, a hard thing to do because there's stone mixed in against uh, the sort of sandy cement that's wasted away over time and uh, it's just sand at this stage but anyway it used to be, sand, it used to be a cement uh, so digging out that with the stone out of that with it all packed in there and all the weight of it it's just a bit difficult but what I've been doing is I've sort of I'm pulling out the stone out of it then digging a bit of the, um, the sandy stuff into the wheelbarrow that's going in the skip and keeping the stone and by doing it in a, a sort of system like that I'm actually managing to make progress so the light is starting to fade now and it's only four o'clock in the day, so I've put on my uh, light just to give me a bit of uh, a bit of light to work. And I'm going to keep going for another hour or two, but uh, the camera probably won't film properly at that stage, so we'll pick it up again tomorrow. I just got a call from work there, and there is no work tomorrow, so I suppose that's a, a good thing and a bad thing. The bad thing is no money coming in. The good thing is I get to spend another day here. So, um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. We're going to crack in to this again tomorrow, 
uh, and see if we can get the rest of this down. And in the meantime, I'm going to keep working at it. I'll probably have to get a new skip as well. That one's starting to get a bit full. So that's something to do in the morning. So that's it for the evening. So we'll pick it up again in the morning. We'll see you then. So here we are back in the sitting room again. Still taking down the chimney breast. It's a couple of days since I last turned on the video camera and the rain hasn't stopped. In fact, it hasn't stopped for two weeks, which makes things quite difficult because not only is it raining outside, it's actually raining inside here as well because I've taken the roof off. And uh, some people have said maybe I should have left the roof on until later, until a later stage. But I wanted to use the first floor to help take off the roof so I have some, something to stand on. And by taking down the chimney breast here, some of the first floors now not supported as well as it should be. So it was just a bit of a, a safety thing. And apart from that, whenever I do take off the roof, it is going to be off for an extended period of time because I have to shore up the walls around the edges, up along the gables and along where the wall plate is, that all has to be shored up. So it had to come off anyway. Anyway, what I thought I'd do is I'd just show you quickly, I've been uh, working away taking down more of the chimney breast here and it's getting down to the last two foot till we hit um, the floor level. And I just wanted to show you the original, original fireplace. Not the first one, not the second one, not the third one, the fourth one, the original, the original fireplace, or should it be the other way, 4321, but this is the original fireplace. And uh, it's just, I suppose it's interesting to see, it's one of those big old fireplaces, there was nothing fancy about it, just built out of stone, and there's a, a stone floor in it here, there's one, one stone left just behind me there, I'll try and move a little bit, so you can have a look, there's one stone left there and that's running in underneath the wall, so this is more than likely the finished floor level for the fireplace, and I'd say the kitchen floor was fractionally lower again, um, which would give the ceilings that bit of height and all that, uh, I think over time they built the floors back up and that, reduce that sort of height, but anyway, that's what it is. So I'm just going to step out of the way so you can have a little look at it and uh, we'll, take a, we'll take a little uh, look around the room while we're at it. Well, it's the weekend again, and I had two days during the week where I wasn't working, and uh, I got uh, on the chimney breast, uh, taking down what was here. And although there was only about three foot of it left, it was the hardest part of taking down the chimney breast. Using gravity to bring stuff down is a hell of a lot easier than trying to take it from a low level. So that took two days to clear it. But as you can see, the whole side of the house is now free and clear, which uh, opens up the space greatly. Now, some people, um, when they renovate these houses, they leave the whole bottom of the house open plan. And that's not something I'm going to do because I need to keep the rooms. I want to have three bedrooms in this house. So the, the room that the camera is standing in just there is going to be one of the bedrooms and this is going to be the sitting room. But uh, the fireplace is gone and I did take up a substantial amount of space within the room. So I'm sort of glad that it's gone. Uh, it did need to come down, it was badly damaged. So that's what we've done. We've taken it down and uh, we can see upwards all the way to the beautiful blue sky that we have today, which is a change from the weather we've been having lately. This is the view from the other side of the room, uh, so the, the camera is now in the sitting room part of it, and the bedroom is behind me. And yet again, you can see uh, the fireplace is missing, obviously. Uh, it's, it was a huge amount of work, and I'm going to show you outside now all the uh, stone that I've taken out uh, from this chimney rest. There's also one and a half skip loads of rubble went in, uh, went as well as part of this uh, demolition. Uh, project. So there you go. So uh, just before we go outside, I just want to say at this point of the build it's been a lot of hard work. It's been hours and hours and days and days of just taking uh, the house apart. There's still more to go. Uh, as I said, I'm hoping Christmas is my sort of uh, turning point for this build and I'm hoping to keep on track even though it's starting to edge towards the January side of things which sort of happens in these uh, projects. But what I'd like to say is, is from a, a thought point of view, would I buy this again if, if there was another option? And for me it's still a yes, but it's, it's, it's just there. The, you, pay, you pay quite a, of a, an amount of money to buy one of these houses because they're technically habitable. But they're not really habitable and they need to have an awful lot of work to bring them back, back to the basics, back to the bare walls so you can renovate them. And you actually lose quite an amount of money doing that. But the problem is, 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 in this day and age, is getting planning permission is actually quite difficult. 
So is it worth it, is it not? Well, for, for me it is. It's still just about worth it. I've got a frame of an old house. It's a piece of history. It's something that I'm going to renovate beautifully. The room sizes are small. If you're probably building yourself, you build bigger. But I promise you, smaller rooms are cosier. And smaller rooms build a happier house. All these big, expansive houses, they're just, they're just cold. They're not warm. You know, you keep the square footage small if you're building. But uh, the, the advantage of building and getting a site would be you'd have a lovely, clean, insulated walls, really dry, really modern, really up to date, you'd be hitting the A1, A2 ratings on the energy ratings, I won't hit that high on this uh, project even though I'm going to try and get as high as I can. So it's, it's, up, it's up to you, it's something you have to weigh up. Do you want to buy one of these, do all the work, it's a lot of work, paying a builder probably doesn't pay, you probably do need to do it yourself, or do you want to pursue a site and get a site and build on a site. It, it is six of one and a half a dozen of the other and until this house gets rebuilt, it's not worth the money. It's simple as that. So I'll leave it with you, but I'm going to show you all the stone outside now. So it's beautiful and sunny out here, as I said. The sky is blue and the sun is shining, which is lovely. And it's a bit of a change from all the rain we've been having. My God, it just didn't stop, did it? It was going there for weeks and it's hard uh, working when there's so much rain coming down. So over to my left hand side here, I've got one pile of stone and over to my right hand side, I've got another pile of stone and on the camera it never really seems to look as big as it actually is. Uh, if you're actually standing here and you see the amount that's there, it's actually staggering that all this stone came out of one chimney breast. So this is all the stone and uh, as I said, it doesn't look so much on camera. If you were here, you'd, be, you'd just be blown away by the amount of stone that's here and some of it is um, badly charred, so some of it isn't going to be much use. But a lot of it is actually really nice stone and uh, I'm not going to throw it away, I'm actually going to use it. I'll use it for building something in the garden later on. Um, or maybe for repairing some of the tops of the walls, I'll need a few of the smaller pieces. But some of these stones were colossal, they were huge, uh, too, too big to lift even. So um, I uh, needed a bit of a help with that and we used wheelbarrows and that to try and get them out here. So now I must sort it at some stage. But this is all the stone that's uh, come out of the chimney breast, it's just staggering, absolutely staggering. So uh, the next mission now is to crack on with uh, taking out the floors in the old, in the new extension, should I say. All those floors need to be broken up and taken out and put in a skip and got rid of. So that's the next job.